Hi folks, just to help you out uh, if you need it, uh, this is how you should be thinking about the reactivity of uh, certain elements. So in this lab experiment we're doing halogens, but in Chem 10 we did a bunch of metals. Now uh, we, there was a single replacement lab activity where we had a bunch of m metals and a bunch of ionic compounds and you know we, um, we basically verified the the veracity of the activity series. Now, in the case with Chem 10, of course, we were dealing with metals and with cations. So when a metal becomes a cation, it loses electrons. So it ends up being the case that the larger uh, metal atoms uh, in a group tend to be more reactive. So rubidium is way more reactive than potassium, is way more reactive than sodium, and sodium is more reactive than lithium. Uh, so that's just an example with group one. I mean, same thing is true with group two. But uh, that's, of course, because electronegativity is weaker as you go down the group. And that, of course, is because as you go down a group, you're adding another layer of, sh of, of electron shells every step you go down the group. So rubidium, being a large atom, has its valence electron very far from the nucleus compared to, say, sodium. So that means rubidium is hanging on to that last valence electron kind of weakly. So that means it's easy to rip it off, and that means rubidium is, is very reactive compared to... Um, um, something smaller like lithium or sodium. Now, in our case, with this experiment in Chem 11, we got the opposite situation. So the small atoms are up here in the halogen group, and the large atoms are down here in the halogen group. So these small atoms with just a few shells, layers of electrons, they have a stronger electro electronegativity for their valence electrons. So fluorine is going to have a strong pull on its valence shell, and that's going to allow it to have a strong pull for one extra electron to become the fluoride ion. The iodine, being very large, has its valence electrons far from the nucleus, so it's going to have a weaker pull on the valence electrons, and therefore a weaker pull on some extra electron. I'm, I'm referring to uh, first. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to electron affinity here, of course. But uh, uh, what does this mean for our lab work here? Um, this means that uh, you can actually predict what the results of any experiment in in, in today's lab work is going to be just in your head. Uh, here's what I mean. Let's go back to Chem 10. Now in Chem 10. Uh, with the cations and the metals, we verified the activity series in the following way. We said, uh, um, let's see, you get a little bored here. So we said, uh, let's say you had iron, right? Iron metal. And let's say you mix that with some uh, magnesium chloride, right? There we go. Iron magnesium chloride, and then will there be a reaction? Well, let's see. We looked up iron on the activity series, and we looked up magnesium chloride uh, in, in solution. On the, uh, we, 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 not magnesium chloride, we, we looked up magnesium on the activity series, and we saw which one was more reactive. Well, magnesium is more reactive. Magnesium is way above iron on the activity series. And so what does that mean? That means magnesium wants to be magnesium 2 plus more badly than iron wants to be iron 3 plus or 2 plus or whatever it wants to be. Right? So if something is more reactive, it's going to want to become a compound. And to become a compound, uh, a metal becomes a cation. If it's more reactive, it's going to want to become a cation. And the same thing is true for the halogens. If the thing is more reactive, it's going to want to be an anion. 
So, do you think a reaction is going to happen here in this Chem 10 situation? Of course not, because the magnesium is more reactive and it is already a cation. Therefore, no reaction. Right? I want you to do the same thinking for the halogens for our Chem 11 lab work here, where if you find a chemical reaction that is proposed on one of the videos between some halogen and some thing that contains a halogen anion. See, like this guy. Right? Are these guys going to react? Well, let's see. I got bromine, pure bromine, and I got bromide. Right now, looking at the periodic table here, is bromide more reactive than bromine? Well, that's the same thing. They're the same element. So there's just there's no there's no difference in the reactivity between bromine and bromine. So that's no reaction. What about this? Bromine and let's say uh, something that contains iodide, right? Who's more reactive? Bromine or iodine? Let's see. Is bromine more reactive than iodine? Or is iodine more reactive than bromine? Now, these are non-metals, so when we say reactive, we, we, what we mean here is, is it going to become an anion? So who wants to become an anion more badly? If you think bromine is more reactive, meaning bromine wants to become an anion more badly, then yeah, there's going to be a chemical reaction here because bromine is pure and iodine is the ion. They're going to switch places in a single replacement reaction. But if you say that iodine is more reactive than bromine, then, well, iodine is already an ion here. It's already in a compound. So that's where he wants to be. So no reaction, right? So... That's the kind of thinking that you can do here to do the entire experiment in your head. Uh, after watching the videos, of course. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I have I've already see, received like uh, two questions from this Chem 11 class. Two out of, I don't know what, 60 students. <laughs> so yeah, I'm bored. <laughs> Come on, lay it on me.